for this lab, we're going to have a beam, and it's going to be loaded thusly. Now, the result of that is going to be that this reaction at this point, by symmetry, we can immediately identify is P over 2, just like we can for this one right here. That will be P over 2, because this is going to uh, transform this into two portions of P over 2. For this, we're going to be looking for, let's draw the neutral axis right there. We're going to be looking at uh, strain gauges located right here for point one, right here for strain gauge two, and then we will have a strain gauge right there in the middle, right there, right here, and on the bottom flange of the beam as well. There's going to be, that will be strain gauge 1, that will be strain gauge 2, this will be strain gauges 3 and 4, this is strain gauge 5, this is 6, and this will be 7 and 8. We're going to want to check our theoretical values for the strain uh, of this beam against the measured values uh, of strains for this beam. So in order to do that, we're going to need to look at the shear and bending moment diagrams for this simple bending. Here's going to be our free body diagram break this down here. We're going to have P over 2. Then we're going to have this length right here. In this case of this beam, this will be 14 inches. This will be 8 inches. And this will be 14 inches. So we'll have P over 2 right there, and right here, and then the roller over here will also be supplying one half of P. This will translate to a shear diagram, which is going to pop up at the start, because we're going to work left to right. P over 2 is the shear diagram. It's going to continue over here for 14 inches. After 14 inches, we're going to drop down P over 2. That's going to conveniently bring us to 0. We're going to remain at 0 because there's no distributed load uh, from this point all the way over to this point for 8 inches. After that, we're going to drop down to negative P over 2 because we're going to drop down P halves then no distributed load means no change in the shear uh, from this point all the way to the end, at which point we have a reaction of P over 2, which brings us back to zero. Very good. Uh, looks okay to me. Now let's consider the moment. We've got an area right here. We can look at the area is going to be P times 7 inches. And right here, the area is going to be negative P times 7 inches. When we're considering the moment, it may be useful to consider the equation we have uh, for the derivative of the moment function, which is that dm uh, dx is going to be equal to the shear function, which uh, in this case is going to be a constant, p over 2, from the beginning until that load is applied. 
Then from there, from the application of the first load to the application of the second load, there is no shear. And if there's no shear, there's no change in the moment because that is zero. And we're going to go down. So the constant moment from here to here is going to be the area in this box. So this is going to be the moment is going to be P times 7 inches. It's going to linearly change from this point to this point. It's going to remain constant, P times 7 inches, from this point to this point between these two applied loads. And then it's going to linearly return to zero. And we end at zero. Very good.